Well, hi everybody, it's Melissa Webb with writeonweb.com and today I just wanted to do a little introduction on math journals. If you're new to math journals, it's kind of a buzzword right now, but how are you going to know how to implement one if you don't know what it is? So I figured I'd do a quick tutorial on math journals and how you might implement them in your home. So of course, when I see the word journal, you know I'm all about that because math journals are just one more wonderful way to grow in your writing and in your math skills. So let's talk about what math journaling is. So math journaling, it's a few things, but most importantly, it's the way that we would have a written text to demonstrate what we understand in our math skills and critical thinking levels. Truly, it's just verbal problem solving, kind of taking math to that next step where you're not just working out problems, but you're actually talking about how you work out those problems. It's very common core aligned, which um, I really can get behind this. I think this is so smart. Uh, this is one right here. This is one common core state standard uh, for math practice. It's just the first one here. There are many that it aligns along with, but this is one where we make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Math journals are the perfect place to do that because basically they expect students to think. Math journals aren't just about working out a problem and getting a correct answer. They actually are about helping students practice putting their thoughts, putting their solutions into work. And it's a great platform where students can then share their thoughts with other people. So it's a great pair and share kind of activity uh, to use in home or in a class. And what I love about it, it's really a valuable reference tool. As you're working on math units and you're having your students write in their math journals, later on when they're doing a study review or they're reviewing a topic that you've already covered, there they have a valuable reference tool that they can go back to look at. So let's talk a little bit about the details, right? What materials are you going to need? How often should you be writing in one? And how do you assess it? Well, materials are really limited only by your imagination. Some people do worksheets and then they staple them into an interactive notebook. Some people have a composition book. It already has their writing journals in there, their prompts and whatnot, and they just add a math prompt once in a while. Other people have a full notebook completely dedicated just to math journaling. Some just do them on random pieces of paper. It's really going to be up to you. Now, how often? Well, you should be writing every day. But a math journal every day? No, I wouldn't do that. I it would really depend on the math week. Some weeks, maybe only once. Some weeks, maybe a couple of times. But remember, writing should be happening every day. So some kind of a prompt. And math journals will give you one more thing to write about. Should they be graded? I do not feel they should be graded. Now, this is my opinion, but I really feel like this is a perfect opportunity to show guidance, not grilling. We want our students to get used to expressing why they think the way they think, how they got to their solution, and we're not going to sit there and get them on their grammar or tell them that they spelled the word wrong or um, say, hey, you didn't use the right formula. We really want them to be math-minded, and if they can express why they got to an answer or a solution the way that they did, then that is something we want to celebrate with them. I look at math journals as a tool book, not a rule book. Okay, now how about some examples? I already mentioned Common Core State Standards, and that's really the place you should go. Refer to the grade level that your child is in. Look at some specific things that you're working on, and then find ways to implement that into a math journal. But to at least give you some ideas, if you've got young kids from kindergarten to second grade, here are a few of the things that they're going to work on. Basic writing, numeral practice, number sense, number concepts, word problems. These are the years you want a lot of visuals, a lot of pictures. Of course, you're going to have addition and subtraction, some basic graphing. But some ideas might look like this where you actually have the worksheet or you have a word problem laid out for them. The thing that I really see happening is that a lot of the math journals that I'm looking at are closed-ended. And what I mean by that is all the information is just kind of given and the students are just going to work with whatever's in front of them, which was, does not allow for a lot of creativity. And these first two examples are about that.
So here you would just have a coloring talking about rectangles having four sides, and then they could practice writing the numeral five, making sure there's no reversals, etc. However, wouldn't it even be better to instead have them draw a square and a rectangle on a piece of paper in their math journal and explain what makes a square a special rectangle? And get them thinking. Don't give them an answer. Let them think about the answer. And here we've got Kevin who had a birthday party with balloons and he gave some of his balloons away. Rather than telling us how many they were given away, how about we let the child decide? He had some balloons and gave some away. You create a picture problem such as this as to what that would look like. That is more open-ended where you really let your child be more imaginative, more critical in their thinking. Now, for our little bit older, our upper elementary kids, we've got more of the Common Core State Standards that are coming in to play. So anything along these lines is going to be absolutely great. But one of the things that I really love are these math task cards. This is one website I love for all of these items. Most everything is even free. Who doesn't love that? Um, but I'm going to link to some other sites as well because there are so many great resources that have already been created. They're either free or very reasonable and definitely worth the time they will save you in trying to create or recreate things that have already been made. But task cards are fun and wonderful. For upper uh, grades still, now moving into the middle school level, of course we have bigger and uh, more interesting uh, math concepts, maybe even a little more difficult. <laughs> Things like ratios, products and quotients of fractions, algebraic expressions, area volume, and scatter plots. So when you get to some of these methods, a lot of the things that I love seeing are having people use the math journal. It's the perfect time to find out what does somebody already know about a unit that you're about to start, or have them reflect on something that just was studied, um, or Throw a graph up there and have uh, the students collect any data and information they can and just say, what does this graph tell you? Again, keeping it open-ended and let them tell you. In the beginning, of course, you're going to have kids that are going to say, I don't know, I don't know, because they're not used to thinking this way. But model it. Show them how you would do it the first few times, and they will start to get the idea. And after a few weeks, a few months, you're going to get this a different child who's going to approach math problems completely differently, very open-minded, and they're going to find that there are many solutions to the same problem, or at least ways to get there. It's also a great tool, these math journals, for any grades to get some insights on the math attitude of your child. What are they liking or not liking about any particular topic? And remember, a great place to explain a complex process would be right in that math journal that then would be used as their own personal reference tool later on when studying for a test. So these are just some of the great problem solving notebook ideas that come from creating math journals. I hope you're inspired to start a math journal with your child this week. No, 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 I take it back. Today. Start one today. Right on.